While the name of the vehicle is only a small part of its appeal, some classic cars seem to be perfectly named to suit their design and purpose. The Plymouth Barracuda is a great example, and it's not just that we have a soft spot for vehicles with animal-inspired names, like the Mustang, Impala, or Road Runner. The sleek, agile and fearsome nature of this predatory fish serves as the perfect moniker for one of our favorite Mopar cars. If you're new to this channel and all you want is quality videos like this one, be sure to hit that subscribe button and use that happy trigger finger by clicking the notifications button. Welcome to our channel, let's take a look at special 10 years Mopar Plymouth Barracuda. Number 10. 1964 Plymouth Barracuda. The first generation Barracuda was based on the Chrysler A body and was offered from 1964 to 1966. A two door hardtop fastback design, without the B pillar, it shared most of the parts and bodywork with the Plymouth Valiant, except for the distinctive large wraparound rear glass. The base engine is a 225CI slant 6 with a 273CI V8 available as an option. About 90% of Barracuda buyers choose the 273CI V8. 1964 was the only year in which the Valiant Crest was used instead of the later Fish Crest. Number 9. 1965 Plymouth Barracuda. In 1965, the 225-slant-6 became the base engine for the U.S. market, though the 170-cun, 2.8L, remained the base engine in Canada. New options were introduced for the Barracuda as the competition among pony cars intensified. For 1965, the 273CI V8 could be optioned as a Commando V8, which gave it a four-barrel carburetor, higher compression. 10.5 colon 1, and a more aggressive camshaft. Also in 1965, the Formula S package was introduced. It included the Commando V8, upgraded suspension, special emblems, and a tachometer. Number 8. 1966 Plymouth Barracuda. For 1966, the Barracuda received new taillights, new front sheet metal, and a new instrument panel. The latter has room for oil pressure and a tachometer gauge on equipped models. 1966 front sheet metal which, except for the grille, is used in conjunction with the Valiant, giving a straighter contour to the fenders. The deluxe model features a fender top turn signal indicator with a stylish fin pattern. The bumper is bigger, and the grille features a strong grid theme. The center console is optional for the first time. Number 7. 1967 Plymouth Barracuda. 1967 was the first year for the second generation Barracuda. It was also the first year they received their own custom made sheet metal style. Convertible, notchback coupe and fastback are available to consumers. The 273 CI V8 is standard, while the 383 Big Block is an optional engine. As the pony car class became established and competition increased, Plymouth began revising the Barracuda's engine options. Number 6. 1968 Plymouth Barracuda. In 1968, the 273 was replaced by the 318 CUN 5.2L LA engine as the smallest V8 available, and the new 340 CUN 5.6L for barreled LA engine was released. The 383 Super Commando's engine was upgraded with the intake manifold, camshaft and cylinder heads from the Road Runner and Super B but the tighter exhaust manifold specifically for the A-body car limited its output to 300 brake horsepower. Chrysler makes about 50 Barracudas equipped with the mighty Hemi 426 CI engine. This is for super stock drag racing. Number 5. 1969 Plymouth Barracuda. 1969 was the final year for the A-body Barracuda. Plymouth places increasing emphasis on supply and marketing performance. 
A new option is the Mod Top, a floral vinyl top, which is marketed to women. This is the first year for the Cuda trim level, which can be had with the Super Commando 440 Ci V8. Number 4. 1970 Plymouth Barracuda 1970 also included the All-American Racers Cuda, a trans-AM homologated race car equipped with the 346 BBL. The new body style is much more aggressive and squat. The engine list for the 70 would be the largest in the Cuda's lifespan, and would include everything from the frail 225 CII6, to the monstrous 426 Hemi V8. The fish now has a rocket pack strapped to its back and no more Ford Mustang is capable of catching it. Number 3. 1971 Plymouth Hemi Cuda For 1971, the AAR Cuda was gone, but the Cuda remained. Unique to the 1971 model is the grille, which includes six blades, quad headlights and parking lights in the front balance. The Cuda model received gills on the fenders. The billboard stripes are optional, which do exactly what you'd expect boldly mentioning the engine size. The rear grille is optional as well as the rear spoiler. Shaker hood is also back for its final year of production. Number 2. 1972 Plymouth Barracuda The 1972 model year marked the decline of the Barracuda, as a result of increasingly stringent emissions laws and rising fuel prices affecting the entire muscle car market. Now it can only be had with a small block engine and grilled back into parts that look more like a 1970 Barracuda. The taillights are changed to four circular lenses. Cosmetically, the Barracuda will not change again for the remainder of production. Honorable Mention With the exception of the Dodge Muscle Electric car that will arrive in 2024, Stellantis has been very quiet about any performance model. It seems that this may be changing, as Dodge is rumored to be bringing back one of the most iconic muscle cars ever made, the Barracuda. Of course, the brand that used to sit under Dodge in the Chrysler portfolio is long gone, so if the Barracuda returns, it will be a Dodge model. This is what we know so far. Despite recent reports that Dodge is retiring the V8 pushrod, the Barracuda promises to be a decent old-school muscle car, like its predecessors. A top speed figure of around 200 miles per hour, 322 kilometers per hour, is also mentioned. This leads us to believe that the Cuda will be heavily based on the Dodge Challenger, as was the case with the third-generation Cuda, which was made from 1970 to 1974. Number 1. 1974 Plymouth Hemi Cuda 1974 Barracudas would be even more sluggish, and with its death, the high engine option would only bring in 240 horsepower. The list of interiors and options will be relatively long the same, but the overall feel of the car is growing more steadily towards the everyday driver than the star of the day track. Barracuda, like Challenger, ended his reign prematurely. Like the Challenger, it also ceased production at the end of 1974. The last three years of Barracuda's life were spent in an emission-limiting spiral that nearly suffocated the Barracuda's life. However, unlike the Challenger, its name will never return to Chrysler products. That just finished our video. What do you think about this topic? Why not let us know in the comments below, and if you enjoyed the video, give us a like. If you want to see more high quality videos, make sure to hit that subscribe button, and you'll get the latest videos straight to your mailbox. That way, you'll never miss a future upload. See you on the next video.